flag and the button shake. Or we can make anything we want to have this animation applied to it, if that's what we chose. Because this animation isn't tied to a specific view, it simply specifies what we want to do to that view. And what do we want to do to that view? All right, we're translating. Translate, you can think of that as meaning changing or moving. In this case, moving, but in a more generalized sense, you could think of it as changing. Changing from X to X. And what are we doing? We're doing moving from zero position, which is where its initial position is, to negative 5% P. I have to confess I'm not sure what the P means in that statement. But essentially, we're moving at negative 5%, which means we're moving at 5% to the left. All right? We're then, and we're, we're doing this in 100 something. That's probably milliseconds. So we're taking a tenth of a second to move it that way, to the left, negative 5%. The next little piece of this animation is we're taking it from negative 5%, which is how it moved over, and pushing it to 5%. So we're pushing it past the zero initial starting point to 5%, and that is taking also 100 milliseconds, but we're timing that to kick in 100 milliseconds after this animation starts. In other words, this thing starts off as soon as the animation starts. This little translation fires off 100 milliseconds after the animation starts, right? If we didn't have this, it would try to do both these animations at the same time, which, you know, I don't know what would happen. If we say move it right, move it left, it would probably explode or something, all right? But we could be doing other kinds of animation simultaneously. We obviously can't move it to the right and to the left at the same time. But we could move it to the left and rotate it. We could move it to the left and make it smaller. We could do a lot of different things to it at the same time we're moving it to the left. So what this simply says is do this at the beginning, wait 100 milliseconds, then do this. This one says wait 200 milliseconds and do this, which takes it, again, going the other direction. So we start at zero, we move to negative five, we move to five, and then we move back to negative five. All right? So that's what the animation consists of. All right? Now you might ask, what other things we can do, and we'll play around with those. Uh, probably not today, but we'll play around with those uh, uh, probably in, in class on Monday. But you can do things like you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can rotate it. You can do a lot of different things with it. All right? Here's a nice thing. Is, is this is not writing a lot of code to do this. We don't have to write code to programmatically move it a little bit over. We simply describe the actions that we want to have taken and those animations occur. Let's take a look at how this works. All right? Let's take a, a look at how that animation actually uh, is accomplished. We've created an instance variable for that animation that is called shake animation cleverly enough. Here we initialize this animation. Here is where we say, you know, we declared shake animation as an animation. It could be any kind of animation at this point. Here is where we make that animation refer to the animation that's described in the XML file. So, we say shake animation equals animation utils load animation this, all right, and we specify 
the XML file that describes the animation, which is that incorrect shake, which is this guy right here. So now, our instance variable shake animation applies or refers to the animation as described here. And we can now go and put that animation, make that animation work on anything that we want to. Now let's go down at the Let's go down and look at where they actually get it incorrect to see the animation applied. I do have to say this is not the best code. Were I rewriting this, I'd make several changes to this. But, in effect, at, least, at the very least they put comments in it so that we can quickly go through it. Here is the code that executes if the guess was incorrect. And if the guess is incorrect, what do we do? We say that flag image view, start animation, and we specify that shake animation, which is the instance variable that we created. And it is um, initialized, that animation is initialized and contains the animation as described in the, um, in the XML file. Now we should be able to go in and animate anything on this at the same time. I would think. I don't see why not. Let's go and try it. Let's go and make, let's try to make the guess button shake. Because we define these animations, 
in a separate XML file that simply describe what we want to change and not what we are changing, we can then go apply that animation to any of our, our views on the page. All right? And again, there's a whole bunch of things that we can animate. Let's go in Google to find Here we're changing x to y delta, so we're moving it both horizontally and vertically. Here they have fade in, fade out, some of the ones that I was describing. And they're allowing us to download them, which is nice. So if we look at some of these, oops. here for example is a rotate one. And again, this describes, we're going to rotate it essentially 90 degrees. All right. Let's go in and let's pop this in. Let's replace the animation. Let's actually just, let's go and add this animation to our animation. should be able to go in and put that there. And I'll make it have a duration of 300 milliseconds so that the rotation takes the same amount of time as the shaking does. So let's go and let's try this for that of it.
simultaneously because I set the offset, or I don't set an offset for this one, so it does this animation simultaneously with doing those other ones. Let's take a look at some of the other things that we have available in addition to the rotate. There's a fade in, which goes and it takes the alpha from zero to one. Alpha relating to the transparency. So if I set the alpha initially to zero, that means I make it transparent. If I then move it to one, that, uh, that makes it completely visible. And it takes 800 microseconds uh, to do that, or milliseconds to do that. Fade out, as we can probably guess, is going to be just the opposite. It's going to go and it's going to take from an alpha of 1 and take it down to 0. So it'll go from fully visible to disappear. In fact, that actually would be a nice effect to do with the button. So instead of disabling it, just make it disappear. And we could we could use that animation to make it fade out if you got it wrong. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do that next time. All right. That's one of the new things for this application. The other new stuff for this application um, in large part relates to the options, which again, with this I can't necessarily show. Let me see if I can run. Oh, I don't have a cable for, for my phone. Um, we'll look at the options next time because I really don't want to start that. Um, now, uh, but we'll we'll continue with this application and look uh, look in more detail on how it works and review the um, review the way the options work. Um, you know, um, next time. Um, again, most applications have a set, or many applications have a set of options that you can go and you can tweak and you can personalize it and so on. So we'll review how that works because that's a pretty valuable. Um, tool to have in your tool belt. Any questions about any of this?